On April 8th, researchers from the UK and Germany published a paper in the PNAS mapping the early evolutionary paths of COVID-19. Debates erupted over whether the findings suggest Wuhan, China, may not be the origin of the outbreak. It identified three variants of the virus, namely A, B, and C, with A being the original virus, B and C were subsequent derivatives and they were each prevalent in a different region of the world. A was mainly seen in the US and Australia, B in East Asia, including China, and C in Europe. The paper made instant headlines in China, and its methodology and conclusions debated on social media around the world. One video invited the lead author of the paper, Dr. Peter Forster, for a dialogue with Yuan Lanfeng, Associate Professor at the University of Science and Technology of China. We begin with an introduction from Dr. Forster himself. Um, I, as a student, worked in virology, so 25 years ago, in one of Germany's leading virological institutes. Um, I then actually moved into the field of population genetics, where we try to use um, mitochondrial DNA first, and then the Y chromosome to see how our planet was populated, at what, how many thousands of years ago uh, people, our ancestors, entered the various continents and colonized them. So I teamed up with uh, a mathematics professor in uh, Hamburg University in Germany and with his PhD postdoc, and we developed methods in the 1990s called phylogenetic network methods, which can deal with these kinds of difficult data, where you have a high mutation rate, where there are close relationships between the data points, um, and we published successfully over the next 10 years how, how the world was colonized. Um, then in uh, January, I, I started paying attention to the outbreak of the coronavirus and how it was spreading. So from the middle of February onwards, I um, uh, registered with the GISA database, which is an international database where many Chinese researchers have submitted virus genome data for other researchers in the world to use. And uh, when, of course, the uh, infection became more widespread, the epidemic became more widespread, uh, researchers in other countries also contributed to this database. So the first Chinese data are, is that genome is from the 24th of December 2019 in that database. And um, the database is continually being updated. And uh, this is my initial motivation where I took the 160 first and complete coronavirus genomes and, uh, and use our phylogenetic network method to see how these types are related to each other. And then I applied what we call an outgroup to find the earliest genome variant that exists for the coronavirus. And for an outgroup, you need to take something which is not human. So uh, you have the bat coronavirus, which is 96% similar to the human virus that has been shown by other researchers, Chinese researchers, uh, and uh, that then is a suitable outgroup. We have called A, uh, and from that derives another type through two mutations, which we've called B, and then there's another mutation leading to a C type. And these A, B, C types in turn have created minor descendant daughter types, so to speak. And now the geography is, is interesting. The A type has representatives in China and Wuhan, uh, but also internationally. And so that was uh, one important point that we get the root in. We know how it started. It started with an A genome um, and uh, not with the predominant type in uh, Wuhan, which is the B genome. Then we have the B type, which is the characteristic type for, for Wuhan, really, and for much of uh, mainland China. Uh, the C type is found not in uh, mainland uh, China so much, but in uh, surrounding territories and countries, uh, and ultimately also arrives in Europe. Uh, okay, I, I, perhaps I shall stop here, and uh, perhaps you can ask a question. Thank you very time. much. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very nice to hear you. So my major is chemical physics, not uh, biology. So, but anyway, I and uh, many people are very interested in your work. As I understand, uh, the virus specimens in this paper can all be traced back to Wuhan. So uh, what this paper investigates is not uh, the origin of the virus, but the evolution of the virus from Wuhan to all around the world. Is this understanding correct? 
That that is correct. But uh, uh, at the same time, there are several points in this uh, in this paper which are questioned by some colleagues. So could you please respond to them? Uh, yes, please let me know what the questions are. So uh, first, you take the coronavirus RATD13 from bats as the ancestor of the novel coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, analyze the data based on this assumption. I fully understand that we always need a starting point for any deductions. Having said yeah. that, how do you think about the reliability of this assumption? You can also take a pangolin as an outgroup and you get the same result. Thank you very much. So this increases the robustness of your conclusions. I hope so, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, some of my expert friends point out that uh, from December uh, of the last year to early March of this year, there were 253 novel coronavirus genomics in the database, uh, the GSET. So why did you choose just uh, 160 of them? So my criterion was to take high quality complete sequences. In, uh, in early March, when I uh, extracted the data for the analysis, there were only about, as you say, 250 sequences available. Yeah. I aligned them all, I looked at them all, and I quickly saw that uh, quite a number of them were extremely short. So these short snippets of a few hundred nucleotides are completely without any information. Then there are a few which, uh, where the sequence started very late or finished very early, and so it wasn't complete either, so a few of those had to go out as well. And so by this process of focusing on the complete and high quality sequences, you are left at that point with 160. Well, I have now um, added uh, uh, an analysis for the 1001 expanded genome. I took 1001 of, again, high quality complete sequences out of the 1300, so for late March. And uh, this time I wanted to look at uh, the mutation rate. How fast does the virus change? Interesting. The mutation rate differs between uh, Asia and outside Asia. So outside, the virus is mutating one and a half times faster, 50% faster than in Asia. And, and this, I think, potentially supports a suspicion which I um, wrote in the PNAS paper, which is published, that the virus seems to feel comfortable and doesn't need to change if it has found an, a successful genome inside a particular population. But if it moves to a different population with a different disease history and therefore a different immune history, immune response history, then other virus variants which are mutated are perhaps more successful. This is now a working hypothesis. I must say one surprise, one motivation for me was, I, perhaps you know this, in, uh, in Italy you have these high death rates. You seem to have these high numbers of deaths, many, many more than in China. Yeah, and so sad. Just more, just north of Italy, you have Germany, where the mortality seems to be 10 times lower. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yes. a miracle. Yes, so why is that so? And one idea, of course, that you think of as a scientist is, is perhaps the virus has evolved a strain in Italy which, which is uh, more lethal than the one which is in Northern Europe, for example. Uh, so the first thing I did was check, uh, is there such a difference in strains between uh, Germany and Italy? And to my surprise, at the end of March, um, there are only very few sequences from Italy, Germany, Spain. So there is not enough data for proper comparisons. And uh, if I compare, for example, uh, the database of over a thousand, you know, about one third of them are produced by Chinese scientists, uh, another third by American scientists. You know, but for uh, big countries like Italy, Germany, Spain, th there's very, very little. And, and that, I hope, will change. I must say, you know, because we have been watching here in the West what has been happening in China, and you have, through your lockdown measures, you have given us time. You have given us time to prepare, and I have the impression this time has not always been used everywhere. Yes, yes. If you see what I mean, yes? Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much. So, next question is, uh, as I understand, the main evidence of your paper is the coincidence of the viral lineage and uh, the relations between the known cases. Therefore, uh, this method may also help find the unknown relations between cases, namely find the hidden cases. So this is the uh, main value of this paper. Yes, and I think uh, both in China and I hope in, in the West, 
uh, we will have a situation where the lockdown can be completely lifted. And then I think we will have sporadic cases and we need to be prepared with the right tools then to locate where did you get this from? And then you can um, analyze the contacts and see, is it likely, is it more like the B5 strain? And that probably comes from this part of the world or is it the A12 strain? And then possibly these people here need to be looked at and potentially quarantined. So that is a, an application I see for the future. I hope is that by learning how the virus mutates, we can also learn its weaknesses and how to design uh, therapies and vaccines against it. So this is then very fundamental research towards towards designing these effective treatments. That, that I hope might be a contribution. There are some questions about the origin of the virus. So uh, in order to study the origin of the virus, some of my experts friends started to re-examine the influenza swaps and uh, the CT images of the uh, last uh, autumn and the winter all around the world. So how do you think about this suggestion? Um, so the geographical origin, that is something I haven't directly attempted to do in this PNAS paper. Um, but um, what you do see is that um, the virus uh, representatives in the A and B nodes uh, both have uh, Chinese and other East Asian countries prominently represented in there. But also interestingly, even the oldest A node already has representatives uh, outside East Asia, so in Australia and Canada and so forth. So um, this, this spread, that's my interpretation now, which I haven't necessarily put <clears throat> in the paper, uh, but I can tell you now, it, it, it could be older uh, than is assumed. And let me go into a little more detail on that. Um, the first sample, which was sequenced and put on the inter international database, was collected from a patient in Wuhan on Christmas Eve 2019, on the 24th of December. And we have uh, looked at the mutation rate, as I've explained, and we find that if we take a linear regression, so if we extrapolate backwards in time with this mutation rate, we find the first infection must have happened at some point between the 13th of September 2019 and the 7th of December 2019. And that's a wide range, but that's the 95% confidence interval. And that means, <laughs> hello, Kat, that means that, the, that when the first sample was sampled from a patient on the 24th of December in Wuhan, the disease was already about two or three weeks in existence. And we are fit, and you can imagine that it takes some time before doctors realize this is something that needs to be analyzed. And uh, most of the samples in December are from the end of December. So really three weeks have passed before we have the first uh, uh, sequence. And possibly months have passed because potentially it went back as far back as September. Um, so that will make it difficult um, to really pinpoint the exact location. One more thing which I can tell you is that the ancestral A genome still exists in the sample. One of the people, two of the people carrying it are from Wuhan. Then I think there is a, a Canadian and Australian, but one of them is a Belgian. And I was immediately a bit surprised why a Belgian. And it turns out this is the first, this is the first Belgian case. This is a man who has married a Chinese woman and he lives in China and works there. And uh, when the epidemic started, he was flown out by the Belgian government to return to his country along with other Belgian nationals. And then he was the only person on the plane to develop disease in Belgium. And he has this A-type, this ancestral type. And he does not know where he got it from, but the city that he lives in in China or lived in um, is 50 kilometers southeast of Wuhan. So it's not directly in Wuhan, and he would have got this infection by about January 2020. So if I were a researcher in China, I would take a careful look with whom he had contact there, and if there is no connection to Wuhan, then take a look at potential other connections and then see if there are A genomes, not in Wuhan, but sort of a, in, in a, a different area. And we know now that is not the ancestral type, it's A. So, so I, would, I would probably 
recommend taking another look at the question of really whether it came from this fish market in Wuhan or whether there is some other possible source. Uh, your paper had been intensively reported and uh, discussed in China. So how is the uh, response in Europe and uh, America? Um, it's interesting. The first to respond were the Europeans. So very quickly you got long articles um, and uh, they, they reported on these three strains. Uh, it was very popular. Uh, then I think the second wave of interest was from Chinese uh, media. And um, I, I have never had so much interest before from Chinese media, I must say. <laughs> uh, so I'm very flattered. Uh, but I also heard, I also heard late uh, yesterday that uh, there were social media responses uh, where they perhaps overinterpreted our paper. And that probably... That probably is uh, is one reason why there has been this interest, yes. But anyway, that gives us a chance to talk. Yes, at the third level now, the Americans are getting interested. So I've had the first American interviews. As I understand, the origin of the virus is purely a scientific question and it has nothing to do with politics. But uh, recently, some politicians called the virus Chinese virus or Wuhan virus and uh, claimed that uh, China should pay for that. How do you think about this? Uh, I, 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 I haven't paid much attention to these political uh, discussions. Diseases all start somewhere, so it, that's not, in, not important from a moral point of view. But I think our reaction, how to deal with the problem when it arises, is important. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, I think th 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 this is uh, uh, the common view of the scientific community.